Hi guys, welcome back to the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. My name is Sarah and today we have Expedition in Stitches where we're going to talk about some of the clothing that the Lewis and Clark Expedition wore, some of their fashions, choice of styles, and then afterwards I'm going to show you how you can make your own little stitch patterns to make at home. So remember, 200 years ago, Lewis and Clark were sailing up the Missouri River and they were a military expedition. So if you've ever visited the center, you know we have these big murals, these paintings on the wall with the men in their uniforms. So I have a picture of one of the soldiers right here. And so they're very fancy uniforms. You could call them their dress uniforms. So those are your very fancy special uniforms you wear on special occasions. Now our men in our murals might be a little overdressed for their day-to-day -day work. During the day-to-day -day work where you're gonna get dirty and sweaty, you probably just wore your civilian outfits. So I have a picture of York here in more civilian style of clothing where you just have some linen shirts, maybe cotton shirts, some trousers, stuff that can get dirty when you're going hunting. So, before I tell you a little bit more about their military uniforms, I'm going to show you them, show you the soldier's underwear. It's a little scandalous, but if you were part of the crew, your underwear would have looked just like this. So, back in the early 1800s, this would be your underwear and your pajamas and your undershirt for your day-to-day -day work. So obviously laundry really wasn't a big concern back then, uh, but your undershirt here, that would be your pajamas and your underwear was a really long shirt that kind of went to your knees and then you would tuck it into your trousers and then you would add a vest over top and then you would put your coat or your jacket on over your shirt. So this is your underwear, underwear right here. And of course, you might need a pair of some long socks because it's kind of cold in the winter. So I got a pair of really long socks. I'm not sure who they would fit, but you need your socks, your vest, your shirts. And a lot of this material was either made out of cotton or linen, or of course, if it's winter time, you have wool, which would keep you very warm. But have you ever worn wool? It's kind of itchy in my opinion, but I have a wool hat right here too. Winter's coming, so this will keep your head very warm. So those are more of the day-to-day -day clothing. And so the men probably packed their own day-to-day -day clothing, their civilian clothing. And as soldiers, the army would have given them their military uniforms. Like right here, I have a uniform jacket right here. And I have a little captain's hat too. The captain's hat is what was known as a chapeau de bras. And that basically means an underarm hat. So it fits right under your underarm, kind of shaped like a taco. It fit right underneath the chapeau de bras. And so the captains made sure all those men had their uniforms. There was a few men who were actually not part of the army until Lewis recruited them. They were civilians, so they joined the army to be especially for the expedition. So Captain Lewis even designed a very special jacket for these men. It was a gray roundabout jacket. And we have some of those men pictured in our exhibit. So Lewis, when you're getting ready for the expedition, he was thinking about clothes. He ordered more shoes. He ordered socks. He ordered coats. All for the soldiers to make sure they were well supplied. But of course, when you're going on a two year expedition, and stormy weather, humid weather, snow weather, you're wearing out your clothes very quickly. So all the men on the expedition knew how to sew so they could make repairs. But eventually you do run out of fabric. You can't bring all the fabric you will need. And that is when eventually down the road, they switch to leather. They start using animal hide. It's so like animal skin. And so they learned many techniques from the native people of how to turn this animal hide into clothing, like pants or shoes, moccasins. And there's a really fun recipe on the activity sheet for this Saturday of how they turned animal hide into leather and involved, you know, soaking it in water and lye to make it flexible. You would have to scrape off all the flesh and the fur 
and then you would soak it again in animal brains to make it nice and soft. And they had to do this quite often, especially when you're getting closer to 1805, 1806, near the end of the expedition, because they've kind of ran, off, ran out of clothing. And there's even something in the journal that says they were wearing through their shoes every two days. Their moccasins they were making, they had to keep making them, because every two days they would break, they would get holes, and they would need a new pair. So clothing was always a big concern for the expedition. And now I wanted to show you how to do your own little stitch pattern to practice your sewing like the expedition would. Now if you were a soldier, you would have had a little kit. They called it a housewife kit that would have your thread, your needles, your thimble, everything you would need to sew. Now we're not going to do that today. This is a little bit more basic introduction to sewing, to stitching. Because if you sew, that's when you sew two pieces of fabric together. I'm going to show you how to stitch, whereas where you can make a fun design out of yarn. It's a little bit easier than sewing and you don't have to be perfect. As you can see from my examples, I'm not the best stitcher, but this is just for fun, to create fun designs. I have a little round hat. The soldiers would have worn a round hat. I got my soldier right here. These kind of look like top, top hats that you might see in movies when people are going to the opera. These very fancy top hats like Abe Lincoln, he had a very famous stove top, stove pipe top hat. But back with Lewis and Clark, these were just work hats. Simple little round hats, probably made from beaver fur that they would have worn with their uniforms. Of course, if you're a captain, you have that chapeau de bras hat right here. I have Captain Clark in his uniform as a captain. So he has his uniform jackets, his hat. If you're a captain, you gotta carry a sword too. So that was always a lot of fun. So there's many different outfits on the expedition. And of course, the men are learning new styles from the na native people, like the moccasins or different hats or clothing. There were even the men on the expedition, they were using their clothing to buy goods, like food or horses or canoes. We know of a story from the journal where Captain Lewis actually traded one of his military jackets for a canoe, because that's something they really needed, but they didn't really have anything to buy it with. So he thought he could trade his uniform jacket for it, because it was a very pretty, very distinguished uniform jacket that he could trade it for a canoe. Now back to your stitch design. It's very easy to do. If you go to your local craft store, you need this plastic mesh wire here. So this is just plastic mesh that has little holes in them for your needle to sew through. I would recommend grabbing some plastic needles from the craft store. These aren't very sharp, so they're perfect for practicing stitching on. And then all you need is different colors of yarns, whatever color you want. And then you just think to yourself, you know, what design do you want to make? And then you just practice. And with practice, you get better every single time. And after maybe you make a little top hat for the soldiers, maybe a pair of socks. Over here, I have a fall leaf. What's really fun with this plastic mesh canvas is that you can actually cut out your designs and then you can give it as a gift to someone. You can even probably make Christmas ornaments with this. You could do circles, flowers, star shapes, whatever you want. And I'm not the best stitcher, so I recommend if you find someone who knows how to stitch, you ask them for help, because they will give you lots of helpful tips and how-tos. But otherwise, I say you just start, all you do, you thread your needle with your yarn, you pick a, start, a spot to start, you push your needle all the way through, and if you know someone who stitched it, they give you lots of fancy tips, but for me, who's just kind of a, um, beginner, I just like to knot my string at the very end here and that way it won't pull all the way through the plastic canvas and that's where you start. And then after that you make your knot, you pull it through and that way it doesn't pull through the plastic. And then I just like to make diagonal stitches so I go diagonal to the next square, pull through, go under, and go and make another diagonal stitch. Now, if you talk to anybody who does stitching, it does take time. 
and does take patience and practice, which is okay. And something fun to do maybe on the weekend on a rainy day when you can't go outside to play and you can just have fun, try different designs. And when you're done, feel free to share your pictures in the comments below. But that is it for today, guys. I hope you have fun practicing some stitching and have some fun learning about the different parts of the uniforms of the expedition. I will have some activity sheets in the comments below here and also have some pictures more about what the captains wore and some of their clothing pieces too. Thanks for tuning in, guys.